So today we're going to look at the El Laco rocks which uh, we brought back from Chile and uh, we're a little slow, we picked them up in summer but uh, it took until now, early November, until we have them all kind of wrapped out and uh, um, ready for inspection. But anyway, let's start here. Here's a sample from Laco Norte and uh, this one is particularly crystalline. Let's see whether I can get this in. I'm going to pass the camera on now. And uh, what we have here is uh, a magnetite sample and uh, there seems to be some sort of a vein going through which has a lot of large crystals, large magnetite crystals, beautifully crystalline. And uh, this must have filled this vein from the inside with some pore space left, otherwise it wouldn't have crystallized with these voids and uh, I guess vesicles of some definition. So if we turn the sample then uh, we lose this. There's just a thin vein that leads up to this uh, crystalline portion and here we see it again. Here's the thin vein and there's a little bit of vesicle, vesicle material in there as well and uh, the outside is rather dusty but um, it's all quite heavy magnetite. It's a very dense specimen. So this is one of the finest we have. And uh, as I said, this is from La Norte. So here we have a smaller one and uh, this has a little bit more of a crusty surface and there's individual layers here that make up this crust. So likely there was multiple layers of magnetite added on top of each other in order to explain this particular texture. So here we have a smaller sample which we haven't yet unwrapped. We'll leave that for now. Uh, but here for example we have a rather spectacular one. So. Uh, rather massive in fact and uh, I'd like to show you a few samples that are less massive which are over here now. So here for example we have one of these uh, more fragile ones and they rub off if you're kind of touching them. Some people have thought this might be volcanic ash that was sintered together and whoa, that's a possibility. Uh, the texture is certainly different from the massive ones And uh, here's another one of a similar type. And uh, well, you can see it comes off, it's dusty, and uh, it's very, very fine grained. There's a little vein again, but uh, it doesn't seem to go through. So uh, here we're really flaking off the magnetite powder. And as you can see, my fingers are all dark from it. So we have several of this and um, they come in uh, different varieties and here we have a more massive one again at least on the inside and there's a boundary here once more this is a little bit more like the ashy one while this is more of the intrusive type and as recent workers have suggested there was a lot of gas involved that was piercing through the existing rocks and depositing more magnetite along the magnetite country rock in this case. So a very uh, intense, volatile rich environment with a lot of iron oxide involved. So here we have a sample that's a little bit more rusty on the outside, likely a bit more hematite in there and there's a bit of alteration, rust brown colors here, but uh, some shiny magnetite is still present and uh, some samples have been almost entirely converted to hematite, but uh, I checked them all out. All of them are at least a little magnetic. So here we still have some magnetite present as well. So we move over here to these samples. And here's more of the massive magnetite. There's even a bit of a texture in there. At least I'd like to see one. And um, yeah, we will start separating the magnetite from these specimens in the near future. So here's another one, just to get your eyes in. Spectacular magnetite. So 
So here's a bit of an original surface and um, it's kind of a little bit roundy and uh, here we also have rusty colors. It almost looks like drop shapes. I guess one gets the idea that this could have been uh, formed from fluids or even a liquid as such. Some people speculate there may have been magnetite magma. Other people argue this is all a precipitate from hot fluids. Some of them want the fluids to be magmatic in temperatures. Others want them to be a lot lower and maybe mixed with ambient meteoric fluids and waters. So there's a lot of controversy about how these samples form and uh, they are rather unusual as you can tell and uh, I don't still I still don't have the answer but uh, well something we are hoping to get a little bit further this is the fine grained material again the ashy type as some people like to refer to it and um, here we have quite a textual variety that will allow us to investigate some of them in more detail so here once more a surface and um, this is rather brownish but once you look into the details, there seems to be individual layers making up these samples. So there is quite a possibility for multiple events having succeeded each other in order to build up this deposit. So here the last sample I want to show. And again, there is some smooth surface here inside. Likely there was a, a larger gas bubble of some definition. And uh, we have a bit of rusty color on the outside, so a little bit of hematite and, of course, dust from the surrounding desert would also be present. So, I'm going to quickly run you through the remaining samples here. And actually, this is a bit of country rock. So this is a regular igneous rock from within the Alaco Volcanic Center. We just took it for reference. It's not an ore specimen, but it's good to have, we believe. So that's our Elaco collection and we will start working with it very soon and I'm going to send this video to some friends in case they're interested in getting some samples. So I'm going to close here now and I say thank you for Noor for helping me and uh, goodbye and thanks for your interest.